Hi, I'm Carrie Cates, and I'm going to facilitate today's lecture. Today what we're going to talk about is this is lecture part two. This is about our definition paragraph, and this is more of how to structure and design your definition paragraph. So let's get started. So the first thing is to develop your paragraph, and, and when you're developing a definition paragraph, uh, remember that again, definition is a type of illustration organization. So we're definitely going to give examples that help to define what our topic is. Remember that our topic is the term or idea that we're trying to explain or define, and one of the things that we have to do with that topic is we do have to break it into subcategories. We could try to explain what the term is not, but we have to be very careful with this tool. We're going to discuss this tool in just a moment, but this is one of the strategies that we can use for developing our idea and definition. Another way to often define an idea or to, to explain an idea clearly is to trace the term's meaning over time. Uh, for instance, this, this one is, um, is a little difficult sometimes, but one of the, the uh, ideas for this one is, say, the, the word ghetto. Uh, these days, ghetto has a very specific meaning, and it, it's not often a positive connotation. But originally, according to time, ghetto was a term used during the, the World War, uh, where the Nazis decided to put Jewish people into fenced-in neighborhoods, and they called those fenced-in neighborhoods ghettos. And so as we trace the term's meaning over time, we can see how the word changed or how aspects of that term have carried over throughout time. We do need to remember to use transitions. Um, even though we don't have always very clear transitions, um, we're still using those illustration type transitions in addition, furthermore, for example. Um, but we're also going to need to make sure to use keywords and key phrases as well. Now, one of the more common types of ways to define a term in a definition paragraph is by synonym. And it's the common way because it's often the, the simplest way. And this is where we would uh, take a, a, a rather complex idea and find a common knowledge synonym for that idea. Now, it's not always an option. Sometimes our, our topics are way too complex for something as simple as a synonym, but occasionally a synonym just gets the job done. Uh, so uh, be aware that it's not always your first option, it's not always your best option. Remember that a synonym is a word that means the same thing as another, and that a good synonym always uses an easier and more familiar word than the one being defined. So for instance, if we take the word feline, classic synonym for feline is cat. Because cat is a more common knowledge idea, we can use cat as a synonym to begin to break down what a feline is. But a synonym should usually be the same part of speech as the word being defined, and then that way we can use it as a substitutive explanation. So if we're starting out with a noun, then we need to be using another noun as that synonym. We, we can't just change and alter what the structure of our idea looks like just because we think it's easier to explain by something differently. So as synonyms, the parts of speech must match. Now the next way to define is by class. Okay, and definition by class is often the most appropriate method of definition for academic submissions. Now, in part one, we talked about um, trout being a kind of fish, and, and so that was where we uh, uh, classified it by, by class or category. And this is when we take that big family tree and we start to break it down and break it down and break it down into more specific ideas, and class is a great way to help us begin that. So class definitions are divided into larger classes or categories to which they belong, and then using distinguishing characteristics, we begin to make that topic unique. So it, it, um, an earlier example was, say, for instance, uh, stickball and how we compared it to a sport. And then we could be more specific and say a sport as in baseball. So we, we started out with this very large class, sport, and then began to put it down to baseball and then began to make it more specific based on its, its identifying characteristics. So definition is often just a method of, of starting out very general and getting more and more specific as you go. Now you do have to make sure that your category doesn't b begin too broad or too vague. If we just say uh, uh, baseball is a thing, that doesn't do any justice. So we need to get as specific as we can be without giving it all away in one shot. And of course, make sure to make the distinguishing traits as specific and exact as possible. 
Um, so we could say that, that soccer uses a ball, okay? But unfortunately, so does football, and so does golf, and so does cricket, and so does lacrosse. And so uh, just saying that it's a sport that uses a ball is not specific enough, unfortunately, for um, defining a, a particular sport we may be looking at. Now the trickiest of all, but that everybody likes to try, is negation. Negation is a method that we can use for definition, but we have to be very careful with it because in order to say what something is not, we have to turn around and say what it is. If we are going to say that, that uh, say abortion, a very confrontational topic, if we uh, typically take a common idea of what that may be and then say it's not that, so if I said abortion is not murder, Abortion, however, is the termination of a fetus at, at such and such amount of weeks. So notice that a common assumption about abortion is that many people believe it to be murder. If I begin my argument by saying what abortion is not, I then have to define what it is. Because of that, it's one of the most difficult techniques to master and use properly. The most common mistake is someone will say, uh, soccer is not a sport like football but then won't tell what soccer is. Just because you tell me what it is not, that leaves, uh, you know, you told me one thing, it's not that leaves 99 things that it could be. So you, you have to begin to use that negation to knock out something like a common assumption and then begin to really direct your reader's viewpoint to where you want them, him or her to go. Now, uh, definition by negation, again, is useful when readers typically have a preconceived notion about the topic. And that was my example for abortion is many people have a preconceived notion that abortion is considered murder. If I decided that I just want to talk about the nitty-gritty of what abortion is, then I would take that out immediately with negation. But I remember I have to put it back in and say exactly what it is if I'm going to say what it is not. Now, the topic sentence uh, is, of course, always what we start our paragraphs with in this class for right now. And so the topic sentence is the statement of the topic to be defined and that it tells the reader what method will be used. So remember that we have our basic topic sentence structure. We have our number one, which is our topic, two, which is our pattern of organization, number three, which is our point of argument that we're trying to make. Now, remember that here we're dealing with definition. So if we say trout is defined as a type of fish you know, uh, with defining characteristics or something to that effect, notice that defined is in there. Or if we say hood has many meanings based on how it's used, then notice that we had that word meaning in there. And so for right now, the, the just the cut and dry of it all is make sure you've got those keywords in there that tell your reader the structure of what you are trying to, to uh, discuss here. Uh, because otherwise it's just going to come across as description. Remember that the detailed sentences are used to support the definition with examples and descriptions, but the descriptions are just a tool. If you find yourself just describing baseball, you're not telling me what it is, you're just describing it. We need to define it, and, and that's where, again, it gets a little tricky. Now, uh, again, uh, paragraph structures can be uh, interesting. You can use your, your five details to support one definition, or you can find five separate definitions to help a fuller meaning of the word, like say hood. Hood, we can talk about the hood on your head. We can talk about the hood on the car. We can talk about the hood over the stove. And pretty much what it is, it's all a covering or um, something that creates some sort of kind of shelter in some way, shape, or form. And so I could probably find five different examples of hood and use those as my detailed sentences. But I could take something like baseball and use five traits to uniquely define what baseball is and what it looks like. It's your decision. Now, again, transitional expressions for specifically definition, we don't really have a lot of those. Uh, but you're going to be using those illustration transitional expressions that in addition, for example, furthermore, um, so, and if you use negation, it might be a however or a but, something to that effect. Um, but we do need those keywords. We do need means characteristically, uniquely. Those key words and key phrases are very powerful to, remain, to uh, remind your reader that you're uh, defining is describing. So in summary, definition is the method used to tell someone what something is or what it means. 
And we have to remember to be specific and vivid in your explanations because you are creating a, an image for your reader. You're creating an image so that your reader can see what you see. And you have to be specific, you have to be vivid. And again, I could say that soccer is a sport that uses a ball. And you as a soccer player may see a field and grass and a, a black and white ball and, and shorts and tank tops. But if someone has never seen soccer before, then they're probably just going to picture the most common sport with a ball. It might be uh, American football, it might be croquet, <laughs> it might be uh, badminton. Well, I guess that's not a ball, but you get my drift here. And so again, we, we have to be very specific and vivid in what we're saying so that our reader can see the same thing that we are seeing. Remember, if you're going to try negation, that you must not only tell what it is not, but you must balance that seesaw with what it is. So make sure that if you use negation that you do balance that seesaw of negation with a positive. And then, of course, make sure to use understandable examples. If you understand it, that's fine for you, but remember that you are trying to make it clear to your reader or in the case of academics, you're trying to make it clear to your instructor that you know exactly what you're talking about. So you need to make sure that you have understandable examples. Hope this was a help. Thank you very much.